Hello, I'm Frank Alaco, and I'm happy to welcome you to Tuesday Testimonials. Each week, we host a wide variety of our Don's family, from athletes, coaches, administrators, faculty members, and fans, all who share a common thread, a love for the University of San Francisco. Our guest today is Nino Giratano, the Dean of USF Coaches, a man who has commanded the dugout for 22 years and changed countless lives in the process. Welcome to Tuesday Testimonials, Nino. Oh, Frank, thanks for having me. It's an honor. Nino, you grew up in Pueblo, Colorado, really a working man's town. What started your love affair with baseball? The love of baseball came from, from my dad, uh, my brothers, uh, the community in Pueblo, uh, just such a great baseball community. Uh, you know, ever since I was a kid, you know, watching my dad play fast pitch softball to uh, him talking about, you know, wanting to see us play baseball and then watching my brothers grow up at Roncalli High School, the, the Catholic high school there, just this love affair for me to, to want to be a baseball player. I could, I could remember back to when I was six years old, riding my bike to Little League Field and signing up for all four games and playing all four games from the time I was six till I was 12. So that's where it began. Now you were a second baseman in college at, at Trinidad and, and at William Jewell College. Um, I'm sure you had pro aspirations, but how did you pivot into coaching? I pivoted into the coaching piece when, you know, the playing just stopped for me. I just, I wasn't, I wasn't able to, to continue my pro career and I knew I wanted to stay in the game somehow. And so I wanted to start coaching and I went back to the junior college where I played and got the opportunity to coach there for seven seasons. And that's where I really started to understand my craft with recruiting and, and building and, and finding great kids. I know you spent six seasons at Trinidad State. You coached in the prestigious Cape Cod Baseball League. You're an assistant at Arizona State. What did you learn from those experiences and how did they prepare you? Oh, boy, those experiences were wonderful for me, you know, going through them wide eyed. And, you know, I always thought I wanted to coach because I wanted to win and I wanted to get that big time division one job. And I wanted to be like Augie Garrido from the day I, day I started coaching. Right. And uh, so to coach in the Cape and, and to have that opportunity to coach the best players in the country, to coach the USA team and uh, win a gold medal in the, in the, in the world games was something that has shaped my life. But it was in the trenches in junior college uh, that I learned how to coach and, it's in the trenches here at USF that I've really learned how to, how to coach and, and mentor people. And you have a real knack for developing players. I know you've helped many players get drafted to the pros from junior college and from USF. Tell me about why you've been so successful with player development. What do you emphasize? Yeah, you know, I think it's, it's interesting. Three really main factors for me that I try to emphasize in the development. And, and first of all, good people. I've been able to recruit good people, but you know, I just try to love them. Uh, I try to respect them. I try to try to give them the respect that they desire and they need for all their hard work at school and at life and as being good people. So hopefully that's a piece. But then I try to give them ownership. I try to let them own the program and, and make the decisions uh, and, and help make decisions that make the program better while they're here. Uh, no complaining, you know, ownership over complaining. So I think that's been a something that we've really learned how to had a, a hone here at USF is listen to the players and, and really learn from their experiences to make this a great place. So leadership for them. And then, you know, when you, when you really boil it down, greatness is, is the piece that we're looking for. Can we be the greatest version of ourselves? And I think I push kids towards greatness. Like I, I want to get the greatest piece that they have that they can give me as a student, as a person, as a player, as a leader, as a competitor, I, I want greatness. And, and I reach as far as I can and as hard as I can in there for that greatness. But I have to have all three of those components in order to develop. And I think, you know, a lot of that has is, is come from my upbringing uh, in Pueblo, Colorado with my parents and, and my brothers uh, and my sister as well. You know, they've, they've all helped shape me. Let's talk about last season. Teams traveling to Pepperdine. You get a call from our athletic director, Joan McDermott. She's telling you to come home because of the COVID-19 pandemic. What's, what was your mindset at that time? Wow. You know, it's shocked, but, uh, but, but trying to prepare for that moment, you know, when, when uh, Harvard went down and you saw things happening, you were like, well, this could be a domino effect. And we were fortunate enough to play 17 games, but, you know, disappointed because it was such a great team. 
and you don't always you don't always catch that lightning in a bottle. And we did, you know, we went to Fullerton, we beat them two out of three at Fullerton, we beat Cal at home. Uh, you know, we had just beat Sacramento State 12-3, which had been a perennial power in their division and, and you know, gone to a regional. So we were going to Pepperdine. There were 21 in the country at the time. And we felt like we were going to go down there and really compete and, and give ourselves a chance to win the West Coast Conference. So I saw the magic happening, but I was out recruiting and I was going to catch a flight and meet the team for practice at Pepperdine on Thursday. And I had gotten wind of the season possibly being uh, closed down because of COVID. So I, I kind of went into that mode like, wow, this is, this is my time. You know, that's why I've coached in junior college. That's why I've coached what I've done. Um, this is my time. This is my time to make an impact and be a leader and, and help people get through this. So got them off the bus, sat them in the weight room and, and gave them a, you know, just this quick talking to about control the controllables, you know, and we talk about it every day on the field. And it was like, it was just so easy for me to say, Hey, control what you can control right now. You can't control the pandemic. You can't control the close of the season. You can't control any of this. All you can control is your mindset and what you're going to do during this time frame. And uh, popped into my head. My brother uh, gave me a book quite some time ago about who moved the cheese, who moved my cheese. And, and that was something that really came into my mind because it was about change. My brother was a Division I baseball coach, and he was transitioning into a different career. And he read this book and this book kind of helped shape the rest of his life to make him great in something else. So I gave that to the kids and I wanted them to read the book. And then we wanted all of our freshmen to read the book. And that's kind of how the transition's gone. And we spent countless time with Zoom calls trying to help kids psychologically, emotionally, physically, uh, preparing for this time where we would be back on the field. And, and luckily, we're, we're back on the field right now. So right. It's, it's wonderful. You know, you're in the upper echelon of the country with number of years at one school and in wins at the Division I level with 598 victories. You're three-time uh, junior college national coach of the year, three times WCC coach of the year. What do those numbers mean to you? I think the numbers are important because the kids earn those wins and, and they're part of that, that piece. Uh, but I think more importantly, if I get 600 wins, I'd rather take 600 kids and turn them into great human beings of character, great fathers, great husbands, great leaders, great policemen, great firemen, great business owners. You know, I, I would hope that I would take those 600 kids that either God has given me or the world has given me to, to mentor, right? And I want to take those kids and I want to shape them. So I think the kids' lives mean more to me. I, I hope that my graduation numbers get to 600 yeah. Uh, the wins, they come and they go. I'll never win enough games to satisfy my competitive spirit. I don't think I'll ever win enough games for anyone to think that I was the greatest coach of all time. But it's, it's nice to know that I've had the longevity and I've been able to stay at, at a place for 22 years and I've been able to amass enough wins. But, man, there's been so many people that have helped me get to those wins. And that's the players. It's the coaches. That's the administrators like yourself, Frank. You know, that's my assistant coaches. That's my wife. That's my family. That's there's so many people to thank for those wins. I just get to hold on to them as a record. You know, the commitment of a coach uh, sometimes takes you away from your own family. You had a unique opportunity to coach your own son who was highly recruited by many prominent programs. Talk me. Talk to me about that experience of coaching Nico. Yeah, wonderful. You know, uh, wonderful for me, maybe not as great for him because it was hard for him to balance the locker room and me and the players and, you know, just, but great for me to watch him play and compete and the respect he had for, for what I wanted to do as a coach and, and what he's wanted to do. And, you know, hopefully someday when his pro career is over, he's going to want to coach just like me. And, and I think that's the the greatest compliment I could get from him is that he would like to give back and coach other kids. But it was great to watch him compete and play. But more importantly, it was wonderful to spend that time with him. Mm -hmm. I think as time goes and, and we stretch this out a little bit, we'll always be able to look back at those four precious years at USF as a, as a coach and a mentor and as a player. And 
boy, what a great competitor he's been and, and what a treat it's been to watch him move and, and play on the field. You know, you're an outstanding coach, assistant coach at Arizona State. So you really know how important it is to have a great right hand man. And Troy Nakamura is like a second son to you. What, tell me about that relationship and what makes you two so successful. Oh, boy, Troy and I have, you know, we've been together for 22 years here at USF. So um, what a great relationship. And just Troy's loyalty to me is why he's here. Troy's had plenty of opportunities, right? And he's always wanted to stay. And it's, it's, it's wonderful that he's wanted to be here in the Bay Area and be my right-hand man. I could never express how appreciative I am of Troy as a, as a person, as a friend, as a coach, uh, as a mentor, as someone to, to spend this time with. I mean, he's just wonderful. He, he, he leads in a lot of ways. He does a lot of things for me and I never have to question it. Um, and that's, that's where you're successful, right? Uh, successful because of my wife and what she's done in our relationship, successful because of Troy and what he's done, successful because of what my kids have brought to me. But well, me and Troy spend more time together than, than me and my wife most of the time. And uh, more emotional wins and losses there, too, a lot of times where we've been up at the top and we've been down and we've, oh, it's, it's I can't thank him enough. He's, yeah. he, he's, he's the best. So, Nino, not only are you a, a big piece of collegiate baseball history, this year saw you become a part of pro baseball history as Alyssa Nacken, one of your former staff members, became the first woman to coach in the major leagues hired by the San Francisco Giants. How proud are you to have given her a first opportunity? Oh, boy, just I'm proud of Alyssa. You know, she's just such a wonderful human being and she's so disciplined and uh, works extremely hard and I'm, I'm so happy that she got that opportunity and, and really proud of how she's handled herself when she's gotten the opportunity. It's just really nice to see her making a difference in, in the world for women and, and making the difference in the world uh, for baseball. And I, I think the Giants are, are extremely fortunate to have someone like Alyssa uh, to be the first woman in professional baseball as a coach. In conclusion of this Tuesday testimony, I'll ask you one simple question. Why are you still here? Yeah, I mean, I'm still here because of this city, uh, the greatest city in the world. I'm still here because of this university, uh, the greatest character uh, in the world. And, and I'm here because I wanted my kids to have a stable tree, uh, something to come back to for the rest of their life. You know, I, wa I wanted them to have friendships at St. Ignatius High School. I wanted them to come to USF and be part of this great university in this city. And I wanted to have a place that, that was home base for them where I could, I could always see them. And so I think that's why I'm still here. I'm still here because uh, there's not a better place. There's not a better place for me in my core values. There's not a better place for me emotionally. Um, so I think that's why I'm still here. Coach, I want to thank you for your time and for the difference you have made as the Dean of our athletic department, a committed teacher who sees beyond the diamond, and a leader who teaches and models all that USF stands for in your effort to change the world from here. Thank you, Coach Nino Giratano. Thanks, Frank.